The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Join me in a prayer inspired by the prophet Isaiah. Open our eyes so that we may see. Open our ears so that we may hear. Open our hearts so that we may turn and be healed. Amen. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. That seems ironic today. It seems ironic that this passage is our pas passage for Ash Wednesday's gospel reading. The one day a year when we spread palm frond remains on our foreheads and then walk around practicing our righteousness for all to see. Which leads me to wonder, what is it then meant by righteousness? I always read this pas passage as a transactional exchange. Do this, get that. Do this righteousness, but if you do it for the praise and admiration of others, then that's the reward you'll receive. Do your righteousness in secret for God, and God will reward you in, in secret with treasures in heaven. Do this, get that. But do what? Well, righteousness, which is having something to do with alms and giving, praying and fasting. Okay, but what are alms? We don't have them anymore. Is that just money? And that fasting thing, are we talking about giving up food? Because I have a blood sugar issue, and if I don't eat every few hours, I kind of get cranky and hangry. But if there's some wiggle room on the fasting and it's not just about food, then maybe I could give up like, I don't know, chocolate or Netflix. Wait, it's 40 days? Hold on. I don't know about you, but that's how my Christian compulsive brain used to work when I thought that there was something I needed to be doing. It stressed me out because I wanted to get it right. I wanted my reward which for me was my father, my God, to be proud of me. 
It turns out achieving righteousness isn't about accomplishing a list of activities, staunchly following the rules, giving so that we can get. It does involve a relationship, but not a transactional one, not to a Lutheran anyway. Being righteous is being in relationship with God, standing with and walking alongside, as one scholar put it, aligning with God, prioritizing what God prioritizes. Praying, yes, with a desperate and delightful need to connect with your creator. Giving, yes, for the joy of sharing with others. Fasting, yes, for the joy of letting go, of not being dependent on and living free. To live aligned with the priorities of God is just righteous living. That might be an 80s throwback. We used to say rad and righteous. No, we don't do that anymore. On this day, we are reminded that we are going to die. We get it. We know we're going to die. It's the price we pay for living. But I have a crazy theory that our fear or concern around and about dying is not really about dying. It's about living. Or more to the point, living a life unfulfilled, unimportant, void of meaning and missing the mark. It's wondering at the end of the day if my life, my time here mattered at all. That's, I think, what this passage is speaking to, at least it is to me. It's what Ash Wednesday is about, at least it is for me. Not just being reminded about our dying, but be reminded about our living living into and out of the gift of dirt and breath that formed you and created you with purpose, filling you with meaning, not just to become a human doing, but a human being. During this Lenten season, we will be invited to walk around in the wilderness to connect with our God, to commune with our creator and receive the reward of relationship, not a transactional one, but a transformational one. Through these ashes, not just a reminder of your death, but hopefully an inspiration for your life an invitation from the words of Joel to rend our hearts, the core of who we are, our passion and our joy, our being, to align that, to deny ourselves of empty conditional rewards and to take up the cross of freedom and to follow wherever God leads us. When's the last time you've taken a walk in the woods? Maybe literally, maybe you imagined it. The earth beneath your feet, rocks and roots, sound of birds and wind, just you. And you realized, just you and your God. A throwback perhaps to those early Garden of Eden days when we walked freely and in perfect peace and in harmony with God and all creation. Your creator has formed you from dust, breathed into you life, filled you with divine spirit, and invites you on this day to take a walk. I look forward to our paths crossing this season and discovering together how we'll exit our wilderness to practice in peace, justice, and flourishing for all creation. Now I say that's a pretty righteous practice. Thanks be to God.